there's just some things that are just too messed up. Anyways. What the fuck is going on at Wendy's? That shit is fucked up. Let me just tell you something. That shit is fucked up, Wendy's. Get your shit together, Wendy's. Look, maybe you're the home of the square burger. It's always fresh, you know? It's not frozen. It's always fresh. And maybe that's a good thing. Maybe you do chili, you know? Wendy's, they do chili there. Well, a lot of other places do chili. But Wendy's, they do chili. So you got the square burger that's never frozen and always fresh. And you do chili. Kind of novel. WTF though. What the fuck is going on with these? Look. Let me tell you about a crazy story. That just happened at Wendy's. This is so crazy. You're not going to believe it. But I tell you it happened. And it happened this year. And it's got a purple people's owl all aggrieved and upset that it even happened. Because there's no way this shit should have happened at Wendy's. So, let's just say it's early in the morning. I don't have the exact time. But it's early in the morning. 1 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock. Four o'clock, five o'clock. Not after six, though. It's before six. Dude is passed out in his car. Get this. He's sleeping. Now, he's in the Wendy's parking lot. Kind of obstructing the driveway entrance. But outside the driveway entrance, you know, the place where people drive up and order their food, then go to one window to pay, the other window to pick up their food. Well, the dude is passed out in his car. His car is off. And he's kind of walking the driveway. So, you know, all the other customers, they go by, and, you know, they keep ordering their food and stuff like that. And apparently, somebody has an issue, calls the police on the car. It's not parked in a proper parking space. But you know, not blocking the actual driveway window either. Kind of just in the way, obstructing, but not really impeding. Police show up. They wake the dude. Now, not really sure if you want the police to wake you. I hear they're not really nice. We all know. Anyway, homeboy wakes up in the parking lot. He is aggrieved. He doesn't know what's going on. So, get this though. Homeboy is just upset. But he's having a legit conversation. Now this conversation, this conversation actually is not like a 30 second conversation with the cop. Oh no. This conversation is a long conversation, y'all. I'm not even talking like one minute. You know, my attention span nowadays is like five minutes and then it goes, poof, it's gone. This dude... And the cops are talking for like 49 minutes. There's video of it. You can't hear the audio. Which, let me tell you something. They got audio of every cop. So you can hear the audio. They just haven't played it for you. Anyway, I digress. Because, you know, that's how it is. 
was talking for five, 49 minutes with the cop. Then all of a sudden, homeboy starts getting into a tussle with the cop. Now, because we don't know what was said. We don't know. Anyway, ends up, he pulls the taser off the dude. Okay? So he's got the cop's taser, and he's running away from the officer. He turns back around to see the officer pointing his gun at him. Now, the officer has a couple of choices here. Homeboy, well, he's got a taser, which is a non-lethal weapon. And the cop is wearing a bulletproof vest. And he knows it's a non-lethal weapon. The cop, however, has a non-lethal weapon. And he's pointing it at somebody who's running away from him, not running towards him. I mean, you're not fearful for your life anymore. You're willing to take somebody else's. Now, within a couple of seconds of homeboy turning around with the taser and the cop having his gun drawn, he shoots the man. Did he shoot him one time? Nope. Did he shoot him twice? Nope. Did he shoot him three times? Nope. Did he shoot him four times? Nope. Did he shoot him five times? Nope. Did he shoot him six times? Nope. Did he shoot him seven times? Yep. So wait a minute. Get this. You shoot a man seven times running away from you in the back. And that person has a taser. And all of this happens at Wendy's, where you're just trying to get your food 24-7. Wendy's, what the fuck is going on? How come nothing else has come on that story? Now, remember those Jewish Your Own Adventure books that you used to read when you were a child? Maybe you didn't read them, but here's how it went. You were given two scenarios. One scenario that you could take, and another scenario you could take, based on different outcomes chosen by you, the reader. He was talking for 49 minutes to that cop. You know what came up during that 49 minutes that we know happened? Well, he offered to have somebody pick him up. He offered to walk home. None of these things were allowed because the police said that it was a DWI, driving while intoxicated, which is a crime in the United States and in plenty of other places because you're operating a vehicle and you're intoxicated and you can impair someone. The problem is he wasn't driving. The vehicle was turned off. He was clearly sleeping in the car when we found him. So it's not a DWI and by that definition. There was no crime that had been committed. Now, because some good Samaritans have gone in and checked on the gentleman, we are in a global pandemic. Couldn't you have knocked on the window and seen, like, hey, what's going on? Like, can you just move your car into the parking space over there? Couldn't we have some good Samaritans do that? I mean, everybody saw the car. Nobody wanted to knock on the door. Say, hey, what's going on? That might have been what the purple people's eye would have done. But you know, everybody doesn't think the same way. Okay. What about an employee of the store, Wendy's, going out and checking on the gentleman? Or a manager? Isn't that what they train managers to do? Go out and be optimistic, investigate, hear different perspectives? You're a leader. This is when you should be the leadership. And if a manager wasn't there, the next level person in charge. So well, there's some options on the Samaritan and on the company's part. Let me tell you something. If this had to happen in an affluent neighborhood and the person wasn't of color, well, I can tell you how it would have went based on the Choose Your Own Adventure. Hey, how are you doing there? I'm doing well. How many have you had tonight to drink? Well. I've had quite a few here to drink tonight, so I kind of forgot where I was, passed out in the Wendy's parking lot. 
Alright, got any family in the area? Well, you know, got some family that lives close by. Alright, here's what we're gonna let you do. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna give you a ticket. A ticket? A ticket for what? Well, we think that there's reasonable suspicion that you are operating the vehicle impaired. Okay, okay, I wasn't operating, I was sleeping. And you have for a little bit. I'll speed it up a little bit more. Fast forward for you. You get to the point where the person offers to have somebody pick them up. Hey, I can have my um, my girlfriend come by and uh, pick me up. Um, yeah, what about the car? What are we going to do with the car? We, we got to do something about the car. Well, here's the thing. My girlfriend can come by. I'll tell her to come by and uh, take an Uber and she can come by and pick up the car and she can drive it back to uh, her place. And then I can go home from there with her. All right, here's the ticket. Don't be out here. All right, have a nice one. Stay safe out here. That's the other choice. Why didn't the cops do that? Now, the cops are the state. The cops are the government. The cops work for us. All of us. We all pay our taxes. We're all entitled to good treatment. The same exact treatment that everyone else would get. See, that's not what's happening here. We're not getting the same exact treatment that everyone else would get. We're getting a disproportionately negative treatment. And in the middle of a global pandemic, that's affected everybody. I don't think that that's fair. And not only do I not think that it's fair, it's not warranted. And it's only so long that this is going to be allowed to happen before people rise up against it. And they already are. Look here. That gentleman who lost his life in that police parking lot. It's a shame. That gentleman had a name and he had a family. And his name was Richard Brooks. And Richard Brooks should have never been shot in the back that many times by the state. The state could have handled that better. Us as people and Samarians could have handled that better by checking in on him. The company Wendy's could have hired that better. And the gentleman himself could have hired, handled that better, that situation, and not put himself in a situation like that. We can all handle situations differently and better. The reality is, there's problems. There's problems that are not being attempted to be solved anymore. That's the reality. We got to attempt, folks. We got to attempt. Wendy, you owe, you owe a lot. You're going to have to pay up soon for that. You owe for that. You owe a lot, Wendy. You owe a lot.